In the view, you see my 1916-661 set up as a hand crank, so it's a 66-3. And um, I just posted a little bit of a video about stippling and quilting stippling. And um, I'm sure people will just move on from that, but in my life, um, stippling and free motion quilting is, um, oh, it, it, it's important that we define things truly. And not just because of all the obvious reasons, but sometimes people spend their whole lives dedicating, and I don't mean myself in this case, dedicating um, all their time and effort and emotion and soul to um, what they do and to just take the term and make it a joke. So I had an angry video this morning. I'm going to try and um, salvage um, at the very least, well, hand crank embroidery I'm going to do anyway. Free motion quilting with squiggly lines I'm not going to do. Um, darning and machine embroidery is somewhere in the middle. Now this is foot number, it's not really a foot, it's Singer Semenko number 86496 sprung needle clamp embroidery darning they call it a press of foot but it really goes on the needle clamp and if you can see in the view it replaces the needle clamp and it has a little hole at the bottom plate where the thread has to come through. Now I have looked online for um, directions because I guess somebody has them. The, the only thing I could find is um, the Singer uh, UK website had a description that this replaces the needle clamp but I already knew that. So what I'm not sure of is how you install it completely. Okay, so there is taking off your presser foot and your needle clamp. Now this will fit more machines than just the 66, but the 66 is a back clamping machine. So if you can get a darning foot for a back clamper, it's a good thing. Um, Alright, so I have the needle inside the needle clamp and in this case on this machine the flat goes to the right and I have to put them both on at the same time. I have to keep that needle in there and you can see the needle go up and now I move the clamp up and the only thing I'm confused about and I think I had the screw out far enough. This does not seem to be going on here. Um, I'm not sure why. I want to make sure I have the needle clamp screw out far enough. This is the machine that I bought this for. There we go. So I know my finger was kind of in the way, but you really have to push it up um, until it won't go up any further. Okay, so there it is installed. And you can see that the needle um, is longer than the sprung needle thing. And see how it goes like that? Now, what I don't understand about the threading, and now I, well, I didn't until now, but now I see that the hole on the plate at the bottom of the foot is actually a thread guide. And if they just called it that, it would have alleviated some confusion. So I have threaded that. Here's the upper thread guide. I have threaded that through there, and now I'm going to thread it through the needle. And 
I don't have a needle threader right here. So this will take a moment. I'm using Coats XP thread. Um, let me just grab a needle threader. Oh, I do have one here. Now, what I'm hoping um, is that this will be good for hand crank embroidery. I'm hoping that, especially if I'm not using a hoop, um, that this is going to help me move the fabric, maybe. So there we go. So you remove your needle clamp and foot. You install the sprung needle clamp. Spread the machine when you're darning on a 66. You have to go through the hole in the thread regulator that is to the left of the tension, um, through the normal thread guides, through that thread guide at the bottom of the foot, and then through the needle. Now, let's grab a piece of fabric and this is just a scrap fabric, but let's see what this can do. Um, so, using the, the no hoop method that Christiana has shown me, whoops, and see that went so fast I didn't um, pick up the bobbin thread. Let's try it again. Maybe if I can find a bigger piece of fabric. 